Hi guys, welcome to pre-calc, the second semester portion of trig and pre-calc. Uh, we're going to talk today about some laws of exponents, and I don't normally start with pause the video and try these exercises, but today I'm going to. So go ahead and pause the video and see how much of these warm-up exercises you can remember from previous classes. Okay, so let's see how you did. For this first one, you're just distributing the 2xy to the third to each of the terms and following the appropriate rules. So you're going to end up with 2 and then x to the fourth, y to the third for the first term. And then you're going to have a minus 8x squared y to the fifth for the second term, and the third term you will have a minus 2x to the third, y to the sixth. All right, for number two, I have two steps here. So first I did some simplification within the parentheses, and then we will cube that result. And you may have done it differently, um, but if you did it my way, you would have a three over five for the 27 over 45 portion. The a to the third in the top would just go away, and you would have just a single a left in the denominator. The b squared remains, nothing changes there, and you have a c to the third from the c to the fifth over c squared. Then when you go to cube all of that, you're going to end up with 27. You have to cube the three and each item inside, so you're going to have 27 b to the sixth, c to the ninth on the top, and then on the bottom, you're going to have 125a to the third. And I think that I just hit the wrong portion of that gray and erased the third. Yep, there it is. All right, for number three, you're going to, I did a little bit of simplification there as well. Um, let's see, I think if we break it right around here. Um, for the first part, I cubed the 2 and the x to the 3rd and the y. So then we'd have the 8 and x to the ninth and y to the 3rd. And then for the second part, squaring that, you'd have a 9x squared y to the 4th. And then putting that all together, you would have 72x to the 11th and y to the 7th. Um, number 4, you should end up with x to the 2n plus 1. For number 5, you should end up with just an x because the rule there, as we're going to see in a minute, is that you will subtract those and n plus 1 minus n just gives you the 1. And then this one may be a little bit tricky. You might think you have to do more than you do. Um, you just add those two together. So it's 1x to the n plus 1x to the n, so you get 2x to the n. So hopefully you remembered a lot of those rules. We will review them here and also have some uh, numerical examples as well. All right, so for this first one, the rule says that you add the exponents. So that's going to give you b to the x plus y. So for a numerical example there, I have 3 to the 4th times 3 to the 7th gives you 3 to the 11th. For number two, the rule here is that you subtract the powers. So that's going to give you b to the x minus y. So as far as a numerical example, I have 5 to the 8th over 5 squared, and that gives you 5 to the 6th. I did not do an example numerically for number three, but it says that if you have b to the x and it's equal to b to the y, that's true if and only if x is equal to y, and that should make sense to you. The b's are the same, so in order for it to be true, the x and the y have to be equal. And we do exclude b um, being equal to 0, 1, or negative 1. If you were to use any of those, you could have a true statement even if the x and the y were not equal, and so that's why we have to exclude those. Um, for number four, you are essentially distributing that exponent. So you're going to have a to the x 
times b to the x. And numerically here, we have 3a to the fourth, 3a the quantity to the fourth. So the 3 gets the power of 4, which is 81. And the a also gets that exponent, so 81a to the fourth. Um, for number 5, you need to distribute it there too. So you have an a to the x over b to the x. So numerically here, you would square both the 2 in this fraction and the 3, so you would have 4 ninths. Um, for number 6, again, I did not do a numerical example, uh, but that should kind of make sense too. If you have a to the x and it's equal to b to the x, that's only going to be true if a is equal to b. And again, we have to exclude the x being equal to 0. And in this case, we are talking about all a's and b's being positive as well. Uh, for number 7, the power of a power, here you multiply. So this would become b to the x times y, or you can just write xy. So numerically, we've got 2 to the third squared. So you could do that in pieces. You could do 2 to the third, which is 8, and then square it and get 64. Or you could do 2 to the sixth, which is also 64. Uh, additional things here. Hopefully you remember that b to the 0, anything to the 0, assuming that item is not 0, ironically, uh, anything to the 0 is 1. So I have a little numerical example there. 99 to the 0 is 1. And uh, we're going to talk about that aside here in a minute that kind of shows you why that is true. Also, b to the negative x, so something to a negative power, you put in the denominator so it becomes 1 over b to then a positive x. As long, again, as x is greater than 0 and b does not equal 0. So we have those restrictions. And numerically then I have 4 to the negative 2, so that becomes 1 over 4 squared, which you could then write as 1 16th. I'm a little aside here. So you know that 3 to the third is 27, and 3 squared is 9, and 3 to the first is 3. So between each one of those you are dividing by 3, dividing by 3. If that pattern continues both with our decreasing powers and with our dividing by 3, that next, <clears throat> that next answer would be 1. So 3 to the 0 is 1. And then that pattern continues with our decreasing exponents, so we get into negatives, and also then our dividing by 3, dividing by 3. So then that gives you a 1 third and 1 over 3 squared, 1 ninth. So math has to be consistent, our notations have to be consistent, so that's um, kind of a demonstration of why 3 to the 0, or anything to the 0, would be 1, <coughs> and also why negative exponents work the way that they do. Um, also in this section, we have exponential growth and decay, so there is this formula that you will need to know. It says a of t is equal to a sub 0 times the quantity 1 plus r to the t. So then over here we have what those different things mean. So a of t is the amount at a certain time. a sub 0 is the initial amount or the starting amount. It's the amount when the time is 0. r is the rate and t is time. Um, how we're going to use that, here's an example. In a certain city, the value of a house is increasing at a rate of 5% annually. What will the value of a $100,000 house be in four years? And what was the value two years ago? So our initial, we've got the formula there, and A sub 0, our initial amount is $100,000. Then we have 1 plus the rate. The rate is 5%. We're going to write that 0 0.05. And then the time here is the 4. So there's our 4. A um, little interim step here you probably could skip. It's just writing that as 1.05 to the 4. And then I'll bring up the calculator. 
Sorry about the dog. You never had to worry about that. Got a dog over break. Alright, so we've got 100,000 times 1.05 to the 4. And that gives us then $121,550, and you'd have to round to 63 cents. Um, to do it for the two years ago, the only difference is our exponent is negative. So two years ago is a negative 2. So then the formula is still with the 100,000 and the 1.05. That's still the same. And then that gives you $90,702.95. We're going to do a few of the class exercises here. We're not really going to need the calculator to do them. So here it says, if our initial amount is increasing by 3%, then you're going to multiply the a sub 0 by, and so they're basically asking for this portion of the formula. So you would multiply a sub 0 by, in this case, 1.03. If it were 15%, you would multiply it by 1.15. If it were 4.6%, you would do 1.046. If it were 120%, you would actually do 2.2, and you can put the zero if you want. Um, and then we have to work backwards here. So if you're multiplying it by 1.105, then the percent would have been 10 and a half or 10.5%. If we are decreasing by, now this is a little bit trickier here, um, so you're actually going to be subtracting the 12% or the 0.12, so then you would be multiplying it by 0.88, so that's 1 minus the 0.12. If you're doing it for 7.5%, then you would be doing 0.925. If it were decreasing by 80%, you would just have a 0.2 or a 0.20. Um, if you have a 0.68, so working backwards, then the decrease would have been 32%. And if it's decreasing by 100%, you're uh, pretty much in trouble, depending on what the situation is, but you'd be multiplying it by zero. There'd be nothing left. Uh, all right, so here we have an annual increase of 5%. The cost now is $200, and uh, we just have T years. Oops, T years. So we're not actually going to be using a calculator to get an answer. You're just plugging the things in. So you'd have 200 times 1.05 and then to the T. Next one, you would have $20 times 1.08 to the T. And then for this last one, you kind of have to work backwards and there's a glare on the picture, but I hope you can tell here that it says 1.06. So the percent would have been 6%. Now down here, we are doing decrease. So we would have value now of 9,800 times, instead of the 20%, though, you're using 0.8 because it's a decrease. And then, um, so it's 1 minus the 0.2. So it's 0.8 to the T. And then for this next one, you have 2,200, and it'd be times 0.85 to the T. And then here, you're kind of working backwards. And so what was the rate of decrease. If you've got the 75, 0.75 here, then it was a decrease of 25%. Um, let's simplify these over here. The negative exponent tells us we're going to put it as a 1 over the 8 to a positive 1, so 1 eighth. On this next one, you'd have 4 times, and then it would be over top of 3 squared. So it would be 4 over 3 squared, just 4 ninths. Uh, number 9, you could work that out as far as the 12 to the 3rd and the 6 to the 3rd. Or you could rewrite it, at least uh, mentally, as 12 over 6 to the 3rd, 
and then do the 12 over 6, which is 2, and 2 to the third is 8. And then for 13, you just have to bring that a up to the top. If you have a negative exponent and it's in the denominator already, you bring it up to the top and then it becomes positive. So then you would have a 3 times a 6, so that's going to be 18. You've already got a to the third, a to the sixth, plus an additional a makes an a to the tenth. So 18 a to the tenth. So that's all we're going to do for now. And until next time, have a great day. Looking forward to seeing everybody next Monday.